Today I'd like to discuss three dimensions of the New Covenant from Deuteronomy chapter 10. It is here in this chapter, in this week's Torah portion, that we have the recounting of Moshe going back up to get two new tablets uh, after the first set uh, were smashed. By, by Moshe, um, it doesn't explicitly state why, but I mean, we know it was about um, his response to Israel and um, the molten calf, this idol that they had formed while Moses was gone. Was this an outburst of anger for Moshe? Or was this a symbol of a broken covenant? In either case, Moses, Moshe went back up to get these two new tablets at God's instruction, went through the whole process of the 40 days and nights again, uh, this time made an ark to store these in. And this story is told just before a section about the circumcision of the heart. So I was reflecting on why these would be put together. And in my estimation, they both have to do with this, this covenant and this being expressed in different forms. So one dimension of this covenant and new covenant or renewed covenant were the stone tablets. Uh, this was a process that happened twice in the history of Israel. And immediately after this, we have a discussion about the circumcision of the heart. Of course, the people of Israel were given this mandate for males to be circumcised, to be set apart in this way, which is uh, what is meant by the word holy, as you are set apart, you are sanctified, made different. So in this sense, the circumcision of the flesh is just the former sign that points to really what God was after, which was the circumcision of the heart. Um, even with these tablets, it is just a sign, a literal sign, a written sign of what God wants to be placed upon our heart, that God's word would dwell richly in our heart. And of course, this, this should make us think of, of Yeshua, the new covenant. Of course, this is prophesied about in Jeremiah 31. But this day would come that this word of God uh, Yeshua is referred to as the literal word of God, would be written upon our hearts. And I was thinking, uh, reflecting upon the Brit Chadashah, the New Covenant, the teachings of the New Covenant, that it talks about these dimensions as well, the, the former and the latter. And we are currently awaiting not only the second coming of Yeshua, but the coming reality of the Olam Haba, the world to come. So in this sense, and I believe that this uh, reality of the world will still exist. I, I don't exactly understand all the, the details, but it will be renewed. Um, just as in resurrection, we will have new bodies, I think, uh, this is both a physical and a spiritual reality. And in this sense, we have reason to be encouraged because while we see all this brokenness in ourselves, maybe even in our bodies and in the world around us, we can be encouraged by the fact that there is a world to come that is both physical and spiritual where there is renewal. There is wholeness, and God will dwell with us. Yeshua will dwell with us in a fuller and richer way than
than any of us have experienced before. So again, just to recap, I hope I haven't confused you with all of these theories. But I'm talking about three dimensions of the New Covenant from Deuteronomy chapter 10. And just as an object has its shadow, I think we have both the real thing and the sign of that thing with uh, the first and second set of tablets, with the circumcision of the flesh and the circumcision of the heart, with the olam hazeh and the olam haba, this world and the world to come. So we have reason to be encouraged in our faith in Yeshua because we have not yet seen the full reality of what is to come. Shabbat Shalom.